The Hells Angels, Stormtroopers and King Cobras have been around since the 1950s, while Black Power made their mark in the early 70s. Well, in the 70s, I mean, I can, in this very mall here, I can remember, you know, 100 gang members either side, and you don't, you don't see that. And you don't see, you know, after 10 o'clock closing was introduced, you know, the violence was extraordinary. I mean, that's where, you know, Jake the Muss and all that sort of stuff came from, the party after the pub and so on and so forth. So how did it all start? Uh, young Māori people and, and young Polynesian people, or those who had been born in the islands or in the country and then were, um, and then had moved to the city yeah. and their parents had been brought into the cities because of labour demand and, and all that sort of stuff. Ironically, it was the arch-conservative Prime Minister Robert Muldoon who saw the high social and economic costs of imprisoning more and more gang members. Muldoon took it upon himself to address the problem. He met and drank with Black Power and Wellington and sussed out the issues. In 1991, Muldoon saw employment and leadership as the answer. However, it was the gangs themselves who realised family involvement, Maori Tonga and rugby league, all sports, was equally important. Martin Cooper is president of Black Power Auckland. He is also the business coordinator of the Pikimai Trust, the gang's economic arm. Martin, or Skunk as he is known by the gang, also works for the New Zealand Employment Service as a group employment liaison officer, or GELS. Our gang pulled this rock wall right around. I think it was about a four, about a five year project under the uh, contract work scheme through the uh, Mount Wellington Borough Council. And then it went over to the contract work scheme. Um, so that's, uh, you know, basically the reason why I run around here is because I know that our, uh, you know, our brothers built this rock wall. Uh, and also it's a bit of a challenge here to run around here too, you see. You know, because the good thing about this challenge is that you can see the start and the finish. And you want to get back to the other end, uh, you know, in a realistic time, you know. Uh, then my job, you see, uh, you know, the many hats that I wear and the you know, there are very many committees that I sit on, you know, I need to be physically and, uh, you know, mentally fit. And, uh, sometimes I wake up in the morning and I wonder which hat I'm wearing today, you know? Which one are you wearing today? Well, today I'm the jails officer. Jails was formed uh, following the Committee on Gangs in 1981. And, uh, it was formed to provide a bit of a link between government agencies and government departments and uh, groups of people. The hard stand needs to be taken uh, you know, for members who you know, choose to go out and rape. Uh, one of the things that uh, we'll be looking at is that, uh, that they're never to walk with us again, you know. I mean, you know, that'll be the, 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 uh, you know, the penalty. But then again, you know, he may have a uh, psychological problem. You know, that's something that we have to actually look at and uh, see if we can help. There's always that sort of thing that uh, that the gang member represents the sort of militarised arm of Maoridom, you know. 
and um, some people see gang members as, you know, the Maori warrior coming to collect the rent, you know, whether they do it by um, um, dint of work schemes or consuming all that money in prisons or something, I don't, you know. You know, I think I, you know, personally would have got, uh, we'd gotten rid of uh, about three million bucks in the last year. Inside Pikimai, the guys get up every morning and go for a run. Yep. Because Martin believes that you have to be mentally and physically fit. That's right, yeah. But there is no work, it seems to me. Not very much work going on inside Pikimai. You mean, what, what sort of work are you talking about? Employment. You mean useful activity or employment? I mean, you mean being pa paid for a job or utilising your day well? You tell me. What do they do? Well, I'm, I'm asking you, mate. I mean, you're, you're the one making When they the go comment. there every day... Yeah. What do they do? I know what they do. What do they do? They have a routine which they, they go through and there's so-called work that's done. Well, you talk about usefulness. Yeah. Is it, do you think it's useful? Yeah, I think it's useful. Oh, well, it's useful. I mean, well, that's, isn't that the, that's work then, isn't it? Useful activity is work. Of, uh, gotten the, you know, most of the, you know, the Black Power Clubs in Auckland onto, uh, you know, our scheme. There was no Māori unemployment before Captain Cook came. Every Māori, every day, was fully employed. Well, I think the general public sees uh, Black Power in the 1990s as they did in 1980. You know, the scum of the earth. Uh, dull bludgers and rapists and murderers, you know, that sort of thing. But, uh, you know, in terms of society's eyes and the public's eyes, they don't want to know about us, you know? Uh, but, uh, you know, they just have to realise that you just can't sweep us under the carpet and just forget about us. Gangs will always be around. I mean, you know, gangs will always be around. Between 1981 and 1987, uh, when there was a lot of programmes built around uh, and, and aimed at the gang membership and that, um, the gang numbers were relatively contained at about 2,000 to 2,500 thereabouts, it never changed much. But when, say in 87, when a number of programmers were sort of withdrawn and it was seen that um, one shouldn't be catering for this sort of criminal element when there was, you know, Dinkum Kiwi was unemployed, the gang numbers shot up to about 6,000. Well, if government stopped funding, I think, you know, all hell will break loose, you know? Or hello, back loose. Are you an agent for social control? Well, I think um, Treasury uh, view or outcome would be social control. Yeah, if that uh, means that you can um, diminish the amount of uh, gang violence, for instance, the amount of gang crime and the negative impact that gang may have on a community, um, yes, I think we are uh, an agent of social control. Um, on the other hand, um, if you, uh, the processes that you use, if they're based on community development, we may also be an agent of social change. Self-determination. I mean, you see, at the end of the day, I mean, that's where we want to be. See, that's where we want to be.
Um, the, my name's Dennis. I'm from the Consultancy, Advocacy and Research Trust. We follow the sort of example set by Jimmy Baxter, James K. Baxter, who said that all you've got to do is to make yourself available to people who need help. You don't have to be a saint or a mentor or whatever. Just make yourself available and help people do what they want to do to achieve their lives. What happened is that the, the uh, end of the trust, picking my meaning to rise, I wanted to, uh, you know, to get into Māori tanga, first of all, because we had to, to understand the future, we had to understand the past.